trying to get everything together but good morning to everybody Teresa good morning Joel good morning good morning I almost ran to the spot <laughs> good morning everybody good morning good morning good morning how y'all doing this morning uh, Miranda good morning good morning hallelujah pray give you a quick word we're gonna try to be under an hour as much as we can 30 is my goal but we're gonna try we're gonna try what are we talking about what are we talking about we're gonna pray and then i'm gonna ask each one of you all what we were we talking about the last time we were on hallelujah i'm glad everybody's on i'm humbled that you decided to be with me today oh my goodness a lot going on. Good morning. Good morning. You're having a great morning, okay? Having a blessed morning. All right, all right. What does that mean? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give you praise. Father, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we made it here today again to the assignment that you called me to. I thank you for your anointing power that's resting upon our lives right now. And we ask you to have your way and let your will be done in the midst of us right now, God. Thank, thank you that our hands are clean before you. Our mind is pure and holy, God. And that we set apart, God, for the task you called us to, God. And thank you that you're raising the level of discipline. You're raising aware, uh, the level of awareness. We're raising aware of consciousness of what we're doing or saying. Thank you that we're preparing, God, for what you're about to do on the inside. When you want to choose somebody, God, you will choose me, Father. I thank you that you are lining things up and putting things in order, God, and you're renewing our minds and you're giving us insight and revelation in the spirit, God. I thank you that we're doing our part. We're just not sitting here, God, waiting on you to do something, but we're, we're, we're pushing and we're doing our part, God. The part that you told us to do before the foundation of the world and what you told us in the word of God. So God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for where you brought us and where we are now. If it had not been for you, where would we be right now? So God, we thank you for your anointing power because without your anointing, God, no soul to be saved and no one will, will be delivered. And no one will be set free, but only through you will the spirit of my favorite scripture where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So, Father, we're not doing nothing in the flesh, nothing in self, nothing to entertain anybody. But we ask the Holy Spirit to have his way. Move down on the inside, God. You take complete control, God. You pray what you want to pray. You say what you want to say, God. I'm just a vessel being used by you, God. So I humble myself down before you, God, and say, have your way, God. I invite you in this prayer. I invite you in into my life, God. So manifest your glory and let your anointing flow through this stream, God. Just don't let it be a word that falls to the ground, God. But let it do what it's sent forth to do, God. So God, in the name of Jesus, we call on your name. We call on your name. And we ask you right now, God, to renew our minds, God, and put us in a place of consecration, put us in a place of safety, put us in a place, God, where you can use us, God. Oh, my God. Quicken our mortal bodies, God. Shake us in the spirit, God, and let us know the amount of man we are, God, when we look in the mirror, God. We know we are a child of the king, God. And we're not on the devil's territory, but God, we are kingdom-minded people. 
and we focus in and function kingdom minded, God. He said, we're not of this world. We're just passing through, God. Oh, God, we're not supposed to partake of the things of the world, God. But I thank you in the name of Jesus that we're going up in the spirit. We're going up in the heavenlies. And we're doing this work, God. And we're running for our life with everything that we have on the inside, God. Thank you, God, that we walk in obedience. Thank you, God, that we walk in peace. Thank you, God, that we walk in joy and we walk it in health and we walk it in, 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 oh my God, the ways and the things that you called us to. And we feel the urgency of being in the place you called us to. There's an urgency. And we hear the sirens going off, God, knowing there's an urgency, God, that we got to stop playing and we got to get ourselves together and we got to be delivered and set free and made whole in every area of our life in the name of jesus we pray now we're going to keep praying back and forth i feel god's anointing already in this place i know we'll shout tiger we're going to pray some we're going to get some words of encouragement and we may, may, may go back to prayer again i don't know what he want to do in this few minutes that we have so right now, in Jesus' name, you want to hear a good word, put good word, I need to hear a good word, I need to get to hear a good word. And not just a good word, but a, a word that came straight from heaven, a word that comes with power, a word that comes to shift and manifest God's glory. So come on, what were we talking about? Who knows what we were talking about? Come on, write in the comments what we were talking about Friday and really all this week long. I don't know what my voice is doing. I think I'll be ministering every day except for uh, Saturday and Monday, so it should be okay. What we what were we talking about? Who knows what we were talking about all week? Come on, who knows what we're talking about? Hallelujah. Until I see the comments coming up, we're going to talk about what happens if a Christian will not correct themselves. Flesh. Amen, Miranda. We're going to talk about Miranda said flesh. That's what we were talking about the last... Oh my God, all of it is talking about the spirit, spiritual warfare. All this is aiding up. I think for the last, uh, I've been on for what, three months? Going on three months to July, uh, July the 2nd, I think it is. And all of it is talking about war in the spirit and what we need to do to get ourselves in place where we don't have to allow the devil to defeat us. So every day we're getting, we're giving nuggets and we go into different veins of war in the spirit so we can be conscious of what we're doing and conscious of what we're doing in the flesh and how we allowing our flesh to rise up and not allowing the spirit to rise on the inside. I was at Walmart. <laughs> you know, when we minister on something, we'll be tested by what we minister. I was at Walmart. Ain't nothing wrong with Walmart. So this lady was in Walmart bathroom. The bathroom was smelling so bad that you just, you, you know, I couldn't help it. I had to go. And I wanted just to get in there and get out real fast. But this one lady was, uh, she was just walking her slowest. I mean, she was just walking so slow. And I was about to throw up because I don't know what was going on with the pipes in that bathroom. And she was walking so slow. So I had to wait to wash my hands. So I ended up washing my hands. And then she went to the paper towel machine, uh, uh, did a paper towel. And she washed her hands and dried it. And, and she blocking the, the paper towel machines and everything. You know, she was all right there. And the first thing the Holy Spirit remind me, come on, put your flesh down. Because you want to tell us, well, you, you don't hurry up. This bathroom stink. I want to get out of here, you know. And I, I had to laugh about it because I said, I'm teaching on the flesh. Oh, guess what? When you teach it on the flesh, you are going to, come on, you're going to get attacked by the flesh. And I cracked up because as soon as my mind started doing that, I become conscious of what I was doing. So when I so I was looking at that lady and I was like, man, listen, listen, you take your time, do what you want to. I'm going to get to the paper towel machine. Devil, you a liar. You are not going to let my flesh take control because I'm ministering on the flesh. Guess what? I'm going to be tested by my own flesh because the devil want my words to be a liar. But in the midst of it all, guess what? I was conscious of what my flesh was doing. Because I was like, if you don't hurry up, this bathroom stinks. I want to get out of here. 
But it seemed like the more I would say it, the slower she would get. But that gave me time to get myself together. You don't know what condition a person's mind is when you want to blow the horn and, and you want to do road rage and, and you want to say something to somebody. You don't know the condition with somebody in. What if I would have went off on that lady? So lady, if you don't hurry up and move from this paper towel machine, you ain't got to block the paper towel machine. You can get your paper towel so someone else can get their paper towel. What if I would have did that? What if there was something wrong with her? What if, 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 if she needed someone to, to, to give her a, a, a good word of encouragement? What if I would have blew that? But, you know, in the midst of that, you can hear the Holy Spirit. Because once you hear the word of God, you're conscious of what the word says. That's why the Bible says, I'm all going to say it every feet. Joshua says, meditate on the word day and night. Come on, you got to meditate on it so we can get in your spirit. So when you need it, it will activate. When you need it, you'll, you'll, you'll immediately correct it. You immediately say, oh, no, I can't do this. Oh, no, I can't do it this way because my flesh is. My spirit is not allowing me to do it. My flesh want to go off on this lady, but my spirit is saying no. So I corrected. I didn't fester on it. I didn't ponder on it. And I went out there and told my husband what happened. We both started laughing. I said, you know what? The flesh is it, things you didn't recognize that you were doing in the flesh. But once you get information on it, then you realize, oh, my God, all this time I've been letting the devil use me. I've been letting this, this little small thing just, just that we think to God it don't even matter and we know and we find it out that it's hindering our growth it's hindering our place that God wants us to amen amen now we're going to talk about what happened if a Christian will not correct himself I'm going to read 1 Corinthians but I'm going to read the commentary on it 1 Corinthians 11 31 and 32 it teaches that God allows us the opportunity to exercise self-discipline and avoid his judgment by watching, searching, examining ourselves, detect our shortcomings, and recognizing our own condition. Come on. Recognizing our own condition. Yet, if we fail to exercise discipline, oh my God, he will not. As an example of Jonah, he is faithful in all and will complete his purpose. And Philippians 1 and 6. If we fall short, he will discipline and chastise us because he does not want us to see destruction or be destroyed. God's purpose or salvation does not change. Again, the only there is, is how much we choose to suffer. Now, what this uh, paragraph is saying is God allow us to self-discipline ourselves. I think I talked about it two weeks ago. He allows us to self-discipline ourselves because God is ready for us to do a work. He's ready to manifest his glory through our life. And there is time. See, God wants us now. And sometimes God has to chastise us. Well, how do God chastise us? When he allows the enemy, come on, come on, don't shy up. When he allows the enemy to come into our life and cause havoc. You know, sometimes we hard-headed and God be telling us, you know, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord down the inside saying, you need to correct this. You need to change this. You need to change your attitude. Come on. You need to make sure you keep your flesh under subjection. Under, come on. Oh, oh my. Keep it down. Come on. Keep it at bay. Don't let the flesh take control of you. Going back what we said last week, like Paul said, I beat my body down. I give my body some blows. I let my body know you're not going to have your way. You're not going to have first place in my life. I got to beat my body down. It means you got to take an effort and you got to work and you got to kill those appetites and you got to tell your body, I'm a child of the king. You got to tell your flesh to get under. You got to tell the enemy to get behind you. But if you don't do this and if you don't recognize, come on, because you're a child of the king. You gave your heart to God. That means when you gave your heart to God, you said, God, do whatever you got to do to make sure I stay in alignment, 
to make sure I stay in position. Father, that means when I lift my hands and when I say yes to you, God, I'm giving you permission, God, to do whatever. See, when we say, God, I say yes, and God do whatever he wants to do, we really don't know what we're saying. Because if we don't self discipline ourselves, if we don't get our house in order, if we don't beat this flesh down, this flesh prays for things, this, this flesh prays for what it wants. But if we don't discipline ourselves, then God will allow something to happen in our lives that calls us to wake up, will cause us to pray, will cause us to get in position. Come on, he's not going to kill us, but he's going to put you in a mind of being conscious, consciousness of what you are doing. And we are so hard-headed, and that's why we got to go the long road. Come on, we won't keep our own self. You ever hear about these people sneaking around the corner, molesting people, and these children? Churches are molesting folks and, and these people doing things in secret. All they had to do was correct themselves. All they had to do was get themselves together. Come on. But guess what? If you don't correct yourself, all of a sudden, some kind of way, it gets in the media. Some kind of way, your shortcomings get out. Come on. You think you're hiding. You think you undercover. But God, if you, God said, if you don't discipline yourself, if you don't get yourself together, called self-discipline, self-correction, Understanding the unction of the Spirit. Understanding that the Spirit of the Lord is telling you, no, don't do that. No, come on. Telling you what to do. No, read that scripture. No, you need to consecrate yourself. No, you need to fast. But we ignore those signs. We ignore, come on, come on. Uh, uh, yeah, my side, when he said that nothing shall come on, uh, on you unaware, it what just means the Spirit of the Lord will let you know when the devil's coming. Come on, but you won't understand that until you in the place of seeking. Until you in the place of praying, until you in the place of warring in the spirit, until you in the place of come on beating your body down, until you in a place where you're not feeding the flesh, but you're feeding the spirit. And the ones that you feed the more is the one that you have the power and the strength. Come on, come on, come out of both shot down. I'm gonna see what y'all saying over here. Woo, all right. Allow us to self-discipline. God is not a uh, micromanager. He allows us to make a choice through his direction if we believe that is so good, Frank. Woo, I'm not about higher. He's not going to micromanage us. That is a good word. Frank, that would preach all by yourself. Come on. And we just think God's going to do everything for us. But come on. He don't do it for us. He just unction. Come on. No, don't do that. No, don't say it. Come on, it's a small, still voice that's in your spirit. It's a spiritual conscience. Don't sleep with that man. Don't sleep with that uh, uh, that girl. Don't do this. Come on, you're going to take your spirit. I'm trying to I take you to a place. I want you to have clean hands. I want you to move with power. But we override it because which one do you feed the most? The one you feed the most is the one that's going to win. Oh, my God, it's a battle. It's a race that we got to run. And it's every day. Come on. There's a war going on in your spirit. I talked about last week. There's a war going on against flesh and spirit. There's a war going on. And the one that you come up feed the most is the one that's going to win. Come on. Oh, I need to be delivered. Pastor, lay hands on me. Oh, I need to be set free. Pastor, do that. Yeah, we can lay hands on you. Yeah, we can cast the devil out. But once the house is swept clean, come up. And you don't do, you don't do nothing about it. You don't get in the word. You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't make an effort to give the devil some blows. Come on. After you got deliverance, come on. After the pastor lay hands on you, it's up to you, come on, to do what you need to do. It's up to you to fellowship with strong Christians. It's up to you to come to church. It's up to you to do what you need to do. To come on, go in your closet and seek God. It's up to you to keep your house clean. Because if you don't keep your inner house clean, then the devil come back with seven more demons. Come on, come on, and they become worse than you were before. Come on, you got to do it. Come on, we've been lazy in the church, and we want pastor to do everything. We want everybody else to pray for us, and we want everybody else to cover us. And that is good, but it's called a self 
discipline. You got to look in the mirror. Come on. Come on. You got yourself in this rut. Then you got to get yourself out of it. But once God see you moving, come on. And he see you walking towards him. And he see you making an effort. He got your back. Come on. All of a sudden, the power of the Holy Ghost, the strength of the Holy Ghost, the might of the Holy Ghost will go down on the inside. And while you hitting blows at the enemy, he's hitting the blows with you. Come on. Because you're, come on, you got power that's backing you up. God don't back up mess. Oh my God. Come on, you can say what you want to out of your mouth. You can say what you want to, what you want to do. That's just flesh talking. But when your heart shows God that you are for him, when your heart, come on, oh my God, shows God that, come on, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Come on, even when I don't feel like it, because the devil will come in, come on. He'll make you sleepy. He'll make you not want to do anything because he don't want you to win. He wants you to die. Which is, oh my God, he come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God said, I give you life, and I give it to you more abundantly. Self. So, what happens if a Christian will not correct themselves? Then you ask them for God to come and correct you. Because you gave God permission. You gave God permission. When you pray, come on. God help me, God. God strengthen me, God. God do whatever you want to do. However you want to do it. Those are words you gave God. And if you keep on going on, if you keep on letting your flesh get in control, you keep on letting your flesh run your life. Come on. Come on. Eat a bowl shot. Then God going to step in. And he said, okay, we got to figure this out. Okay, we got to go this route. I want her to go this route. I want her to go the short route. I want I, some of the process I didn't want her to go through. But because she won't manage her own body, because she won't do what she's supposed to do, then I'm going to help manage it. Either way it goes, it's going to get you there. Come on. However way, come on, come on. We're going to go this way or we're going to go this way. Especially if you got a high calling on your life, come on. God is coming back after you, come on. He's coming back after that gift on the inside of you. But the devil wants you to go the long version. He wants, come on, here you go, shut tie up. Come on, you walk in that straight and narrow road. But you got to take a little, little, little side road, come on. Because, oh my God, God's very patient with us. He's very loving with us. But he gives us exactly what we need, come on. He gives us, the, oh my God. Whatever it takes to get you to the place you need to be. That's what God's going to do because, come on, when we don't walk in God's will, it gives the enemy access, come on, to our flesh. Sin gives the enemy access to our flesh. The enemy can't take, take touch our flesh as long as we in the spirit. So that's why he watches us day and night. He waits for us not to pray. He don't only wait for us not to pray. He causes something to happen. Come on. He comes around your surroundings and causes you not want to pray. He calls you to be sleepy and lazy. He calls you to not want to do anything. Come on. It is undolobo shot up because he already know what God's going to do. He already know, oh my God, that I'm going to make them miss their time. That I'm going to make them miss their season. I'm going to cause their flesh to come out to be in control. I'm going to cause them to watch TV all night long. <coughs> I'm going to call them to watch videos all night long. I'm going to call them to watch Candy Crush all night long. And they know they're supposed to be in the Word. They know it's time for them to pray. They know they're supposed to fast. But I'm going to cause all my decor. Come on. And they my so called. Because I know that they, come on, their flesh is very weak. I know their spirit is, come on, is not even charged up. And I'm going to, come on, because I'm going to move in. Come on. Because I've been watching them. Come on. And I've just been waiting for a crack. I've just been waiting for a door. And soon as you do that, you allow the enemy to come in. Woo! My God, my God, my God. You allow the enemy to come in. You allow the enemy to steal your goods. You allow the enemy to steal your happiness. Come on, I'm always saying it. I've just been one of the words I've been using. The enemy's crouching at your door. He knows the call is on your life. And he wants you to miss it. Come on, put down here. The devil wants you to miss it. He wants you to think it's too hard. Oh, it's too, 
glory. I don't know if I can do that. You know when you say that, that's the enemy using your flesh and allowing you to voice out what you can't do. Come on, I can do all things through Christ. You reverse that. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It takes strength from the Holy Ghost. Well, how do I get strength? We're going back seeking his face. Come on. The Bible in Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask and it shall be given. Woo. Seek, ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. You got to ask first. Come on. You got to go and say, God, I need your help, God. Father, this flesh is overtaking me, God. I can't seem to pray, God. I can't seem, God, oh my God, to, to, to do what you call me to do. But then there's got to be a hunger down on the inside. That when you ask, come on, there's a hunger that God will give you that's down on the inside. Come on. We're causing you to seek him like never before, God. He will cause a little shot, a thirst down on the inside. And once you start that seeking and once the hunger and thirst, God, start moving down on the inside. Come on. That makes you God conscious. Come on. That makes you spiritual conscious. Cause that both shot. And once that hunger starts stirring up down on the inside, that when you knock on that door, it's going to open wide for you. Come on. It takes consecration. It takes seeking them like never before. Come on. It takes asking, not for houses and cars, but asking for spiritual growth. Asking for the manifestation of his power. Asking God help my spirit spirit come on to be oh my god to rise up down on the inside god help me god to have an urgency god help me to have a love for you like i never had before god but soon as that seat come down on the inside that's when god starts opening his power that's when god starts manifesting his spirit that's when there's an open heaven above you that's when your heart come on has a love for god like you never had before and all of a sudden when you knock on the door come up he will open up to you and that door will open wide come up in the undo shot what oh god you need to do about correcting yourself you got to correct yourself i can do all things to pray yes my man oh my god the devil wants you to miss it and i can do all things to christ yes 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 we can't let him win we all don't need to talk about the devil. We're going to talk about him. There's no secret about him. People need to know about him. People need to know your enemy. You need to know what's keeping you. Come on, pulling you into the world. Your flesh is craving. Your flesh needs to die. Come on, every time there's a crave, every time there's a want, it's your flesh is not dead. You got to beat it. You got to kill it. Come on, you got to buff it, buff at it, buff, beat, come on, you got to make an effort to fight, come on, we become so lazy in the church, even as Christians, come on, we don't even have a fight down on the inside of us, we allow the devil come in all kind of ways, we don't even shut the door and shut the windows, every time something happens, every time the, the storm blows, and, and every time the rain comes, and, and every time the flood comes, and whatever comes in our life, we allow our flesh to be in control, but when you do that, that lets me know, come on, that you haven't deposited everything down on the inside, you haven't read the word like you should, you haven't meditated on the word day and night, you have not prayed without ceasing, when you pray without ceasing, it closes the doors to the enemy. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the hell that my life is going through. You don't know how hard it is. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how big it is. Come on, come on. It don't matter with God. Come on. Everything's the same plane. Everything's the same size. Ain't no big things and little things before God. I don't care if it's a small headache. I don't care if it's a big bomb. It don't matter what it is. Come on. That same power that will heal your headache. That same power that will deliver your soul. It it doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter how big it is. You still got to keep your flesh under. Woo, under, under, under the Asia. We got to keep this flesh under. Woo, under, 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 under. 
Okay, this one, um, I'm still reading in 1 Corinthians. Ooh, I feel God. 31 and 32. Ooh, you know, the weight I'm carrying right now is a good weight. It's God. Open up our eyes. We give up so easy. And we act like God can't do it. We act like God can't deliver us. We act like God can't change us. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. We serve a God that can change anything. Have you had enough of suffering? Have you had enough of going through what pastor? You, you, you just preach these, 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 these sermons. It seems so, so complicated. It's not complicated with God. I'm just trying to get to the core of what's going on with you. I'm trying to get to the core that's causing you not to grow. We're standing in our same places and we're not moving forward. We just accept salvation. But God wants more, come on, just, than just salvation. Whatever God delivered you from, come on, and He will deliver you if you're not delivered. He wants you to, He wants to take that, come on, that situation that He delivered you from. And he wants you to go back. Come on, once you delivered and made hope. And he wants you to go back out there and help someone else. Come on. I don't care what you're going through. That somebody else needs you. Somebody else needs you deliverance. Somebody else needs you in prayer and fasting and seeking God. Because it's not for we're selfish when we just stay in our own self. And we won't discipline ourselves. And we won't correct. That's just selfish. Because there's souls in your lawns that God wants you to reach. And God's warning you to get in your place. He's warning you to be delivered and set free. He's warning you. Come on. He's calling your name. And whatever it takes. Because he put something down on the inside. And whatever you got to go through to get to that point. Whatever he has to do. Come on. On the most shot, Taya. What was I getting ready to read? Woo. On the about Saya. God do not want to see us destroyed. God's purpose, our salvation does not change. No matter what you're going through. Oh. The only variable is how much we choose to suffer before he accomplishes purpose. We choose whether we will be humble or be humbled. Come on. We choose how much we suffer. We choose that road. God gives us a choice. He's calling your name right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm in a pool. He's calling your name right now. You got to stop running. Come on. Because you're going to keep suffering and you're going to keep going through because of the mighty call that's on your life. I'm telling you, when you got a mighty call, that God put inside you before the foundation of the world, when even in your mother's womb, all hell going to break loose around you. All crazy things are going to happen. And sometimes you ask God, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Why can't I be like everybody else? Why can't I just be a normal person? Why do I have to be sick? Why do I have to act like this? Why do I have to be like this? Why don't you come and deliver me? Why don't you come and set me free? Whom he call, he chastises. He chastises. That's not a bad thing. That's good news. That means when your parents chastise you, they chastise you because they love you. They chastise you because they want the best from you. They just ties you because they see you down the road and they see years later. Well, if our parents do that, we don't even love like God loves. If our parents does that, what do you think God is doing? Come on. Well, God don't love me because, you know, he, no, God loves you. And he's trying to woo you in and he's trying to pull you in a place. Come on. Come on, the heavier you're going through, I'm telling you, the heavier that you're going through, that weight that you're going through and carrying right now, when God delivers you, just look out for the weight and the spirit that you're going to have to cover. There's people, they need a Moses. They need a Moses. They need somebody to say, come on, come on, come on. 
You're about to be delivered. You're about to be set free. God going to use me to set you free, to take you to the promised land. Come on. God going to use you like never before. So it's not about us. It's not about us. Not about what we want and not about what we think. But it's about God manifesting his power down on the inside. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace and your patience that you are having with us, God, because we'll get a momentum in the spirit, momentum in the spirit, and then we'll shirk back, and then we'll get it, and we'll shirk back. But God, I thank you in the name of Jesus that we're going to get our complete healing, our complete deliverance, our complete breakthrough. And we ask for the anointing power to go through this life right now. I don't know who all I'm talking to, but be delivered, be set free. Don't keep vacillating because God got a mighty work. God can't put his hand on stuff that's not together. God can't put his hand on sin and flesh. God can't put his hand on things that's, that's messed up and out of alignment. But God want to change you. He want to deliver you. He want to line your life up. He wants to do something great on the inside of you. He wants you to be conscious of what you're doing. He wants you to be conscious of what you're saying. Conscious of who you're around. Come on. Conscious of who's speaking into your life. Yeah, the devil's on your trail if you allow him to be. But the manifestation of God is down on the inside. He's coming back after that gift that he placed in there. Come on, honorable shitty bo shot He's coming back after you, Kalaboshata. And that's why you feel the Holy Spirit wooing you. That's why things do not seem like it's going right. That's why it seems like all your world is turning upside down right now. That's only God allowing the suffering to come just a little bit, just to push you in a place he wants you to. That's what discipline is. Come on. He's disciplining like you would discipline your child. He's doing the same thing your, your, your natural father would do. And that's because he loves you. He got to get you on the right track. Come on, he got to lead you, guide you. He got to take you to the road that, that's going to take you to the place you need to be. And that is crucifying your flesh. And that's keeping your flesh subjection under, under, under. And keeping it down. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we're opening our, our spiritual senses. Ooh. We're opening up our mind. And we thank you for what you're already doing. And for what you're already showing us. And that you're having your way. And your way is being done in our life. Because you've begun a good work in us. Woo. And we're going to allow you to finish it to the end. We're not like the circumstances or nothing to come in our way. In the mighty name of Jesus. I love everybody. Woo, yeah, I'm doing good. I love everybody. Come on, I feel the power of God right now. I love everybody. And we just, we're we going to do this. Come on. We're going to get ourselves in a place of maturity, of growth. And everything we've been talking about for the last, oh my God, two months and a half, whatever, is, is, is teaching us how to war, to know our enemies. Come on. To know who we are in the spirit and not allow the enemy to be in control, but allowing yourself. Come on. You're conscious of, that's, you're conscious of yourself. The enemy don't want you to know yourself. He don't want you to know your shortcomings. He don't want you to snitch on him. He wants you to keep it down on the inside so nobody know about it. But I'm telling you, it's not being hid. Come on, those in the spirit that discern will know that you're going through something. Come on, put down that pride. I think we talked about accountability. We talked about that. I think some people already started having accountability partners where they can help them. Because listen, listen y'all, the body of Christ need a team. We need some people that's warriors. We need some people that's on fire. I think I was preaching Sunday morning and we were talking about when we pray, we have to show some aggression. We, you know, we have to show some, some um, power. 
And sometimes when we show power, we got to use our fist and our hand. And when you do this in the spirit, I'm telling y'all, I'm just, I'm just showing you how to do warfare and pray. When you do things like this in the spirit, come on, you're, you're focusing your mind. It's helping your mind to be focused in the spirit. Come on, when you do this, you know, it's an outward thing, but I know it helps you. When I told him outside to pray, you got to do something. Stomp your feet, walk real fast, run, do something. Get a pace in the spirit, and it causes your mind to be focused. And it causes you to tap in faster than you ever tapped in before. Come on, you got to make some movement. Come on, and it might be an outward movement. Come on, but it's an inward victory. It's an inward fight. And it's a fight that's going on in your spirit. Some of y'all got to dance and jump. Some of y'all got to run. It's something you have to do to keep that pace and activate what's in your spirit. Because sometimes when you start praying, you don't even feel anything at all. And sometimes that can stop you and slow you down. Come on. Audible. So when I'm in my prayer room, sometimes I'm tired when I go in there. And I'm just like, oh, my God. But all of a sudden, I just start moving. I move my, I just, I just start moving. It wakes my, it, it shakes something in my spirit. Come on. It's giving me a pace. And when I pray, it's giving me a pace. It's giving me movement so I won't give up. Come on. And I won't stop. It wakes up my spirit. Oh, you know, we're giving you keys and things you can use to make the cause, the, the activation of the power of God, even in your seat, even in your prayer time, even in your consecration. Come on. We got to go down. You know, I'll tell people, it ain't no, ain't no, ain't no warming up. We got to go from one to ten in prayer. Come on. Because when the devil tries to attack our life, he goes straight to ten. Come on. Edible. The devil don't have to warm up. Come on. He never slumbers or sleep. He's always watching for us to fall. He always watching for us to miss God. So when we pray, we got to pray with fervency. We got to pray with power, with aggression. Come on, with violence. Come on. Oh my God. When you warn against the spirit, when you know that something's coming against your children, when you know it's something coming against your home, when it's coming against your family, you're not going to sit there and die, but you're going to manifest God's spirit and you're going to make sure your flesh is not in the way you want to make sure that the spirit is rising high on the inside of you and it's stirred up he said stir up the gift on the inside means your praise your worship your tapping in come on oh my my son your movement come on it's causing the power of god to rise up on the inside of you we got to learn how to pray right oh my god another most shot time there is a time to be quiet there is a time to meditate, but there's a time to be in war, especially when your, your marriage is going through, especially when your kids are going through, especially when your job, things are happening. Come on, come on. There's a time to fight the good fight of faith and not allow the devil to overpower you. Woo, I got about to stop tight. Well, I got to go, you all. I got to go. I got to go. I love everybody that's on here. If you have any uh, a testimony or something, please put it in the car. I got to get something to this voice. I am, my voice is leaving. <laughs> Whew, I know they both shot tired. Come on, put something in the comments. In the name of Jesus, if you have something to say or something we need to pray for, if something I said, come on, that you want, you want us to pray to push you into that place because God is, is waiting. I mean, God, he's always here. He never leave us nor forsake us. Come on. Oh, my God. He's waiting on us. We're not waiting on him. He's waiting on us. Because there's some great and powerful things that God's about to do. And he's about to manifest his glory in the earth and in this season. And he's going to manifest it through you, through you, through you, through you, through you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Me. Yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He wants to use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. Well, I'm letting y'all know the best is yet to come. We'll be here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And we're going to go into the, I think we're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit of Man. This is still talking about the warfare. In warfare, you're going to need the fruit. So we're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit tomorrow. We're going to add them in into our daily life of keeping the flesh down. And to keep the flesh down, you need to add in the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I love everybody. Uh, see y'all tomorrow. Please post your comments. Uh, anything in the comments that you want to comment. And I'm leaving. Amen. Amen.